introduce our Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Hamid Shervani. Thank you. I welcome you to the most important event in Chapman's academic calendar. May I ask the faculty to please rise. Let us express our gratitude to the heart and soul of Chapman University, the faculty. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the Faculty Senate President, the Academic Deans and Administrative Officers of Chapman University. Dr. Andrew Mosier, President of the Faculty Senate, please rise as I call your name. Dr. Francis Tuggle, Dean of the George Earl Argerus School of Business and Economics. Dr. Myron Yeager, Dean of the Communication Arts. Dr. Dean, I'm sorry, Dr. Don Cardinal, Dean of the School of Education. Mr. Jones, Joseph Slowinski, Graduate Chair, Lawrence and Christina Dodge, College of Film and Media Arts. Mr. Parham Williams, Dean of the School of Law. Dr. Roberta Lesur, Dean of the Wilkinson College of Letters and Sciences. Ms. Charlene Baldwin, Dean of the Letter B Libraries. Dr. Ronald Farmer, Dean of the Wallace All Faiths Chapel. Dr. David Feit, Associate Provost for Institutional Planning and Assessment. Dr. Raymond Sphere, Associate Provost for Academic Administration. Dr. Ellen Curtis Pierce, Assistant Provost for Teachers Education. Dr. Jean Gunner, Assistant Provost for General Education. Mr. Gary Brom, Executive Vice President for Business and Finance. Ms. Saskia Knight, Vice President and Dean of, Dean of Enrollment Services. Dr. Joseph Curtis, Vice President and Dean of Students. And Mr. John Snodgrass, the Registrar. Please give them a round of applause. Mr. Carl Sinclair, would you please join me on the podium? And President Dodi. President Dodi, it is my honor and pleasure to present the candidate for the honorary degree of Doctor of Arts, Mr. Carl Sinclair. Carl we are honored to recognize your many contributions to expanding the reach and breadth of classical music available to Orange County audiences. As musical director of the Pacific Symphony for 14 years, you have created innovative educational and outreach programs to teach new audiences about the beauty of classical music, bringing us both a new chamber music series and conducting conducting an eclectic mix of respected classics and new works by modern composers. You've also commissioned and recorded new works, conducted world premieres and live broadcasts, and simply enriched our lives with the beauty and glory of the symphony's performances. The fact that you are in demand across the country and around the world, on a stages from Hamburg to Hong Kong, is testimony to your talent and your impact on the world of classical music. It is with great pride that Chapman University bestows upon you the degree of Doctor of Arts, honoris causa. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Chapman University, 
I hereby confer upon you, Carl St. Clair, the degree of Doctor of Arts, <coughs> honoris causa, with all the rights, privileges, immunities, and honors thereunto appertaining. Congratulations. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I just wish my mom and dad could be here. I'm certainly happy that my wife Susan is here with me. When I think about the paths that I've chosen since graduating in 1976 and 1975 and 1976 from the University of Michigan, it's come to it's come to my realization that there are those who work so that they can live a lifestyle that they would like to live. And then there are those who work. So I should, let me turn this around a little bit. What I'm trying to say is that those are work, those are, there are some people that work so they can live the way they want to live. But as an artist and as an educator and as a teacher and as a musician and conductor, I live so that I can do the work that I've been called upon to do. Having my efforts be recognized and deemed worthy by this great institution instills in me a great sense of gratification, thankfulness, and serves as inspiration to continue seeking to allow classical music to be a birthright of all young and old people. God has given me great talents, and I will be forever thankful for this gift. This is his gift to me, my gift to him, in return, is how I use these talents. This honorary doctorate will serve as great inspiration for the rest of my life. Thank you. I would like to recognize Mrs. Susan Sinclair. Would you please rise, stand up, and get recognized. Today marks a moment of transition for those of you about to graduate between all you've done in a school and the future for which you have prepared. As you ponder this point of transition, I hope that you're thinking about your priorities for the world in which you want to live. In many ways, no doubt, the world is not what you wish it would be. Our lives are constrained by the constant threat of terrorism. We are at war in Iraq. People in this country are fighting for their views of what is right and what is needed. Do we need national health coverage? Should gays and lesbians be allowed to marry? Are we doing enough to protect the environment? I will not attempt to answer those questions for you. Each of you will have your own answers. But what I will ask is what are you willing to do to create the world fits your ideals? What are you who are joining the rank of the best educated people on the planet prepared to do to make this troubled world safer, more peaceful, and more just? Many of you may have parents who grew up in the 60s, and you're probably tired of hearing about the golden age of student activism. I agree, it's time to stop talking about the activism of the past for you and to start defining how activism will play a role in your life. Today we are watching to see if democracy can take root in Iraq. But in, the, in this process, we often forget to examine the health of our own democracy because democracy is like a relationship. The minute you stop working at it, no matter how strong it's been, it begins to weaken. Democracy in this country has gotten tired. We take it for granted. Voter turnout is low, but true civic engagement is even lower. You cannot just vote and go home 
and think I am a good citizen. Citizenship comes at a much higher price, and voting is just the beginning. Today, I hope you will think about your civic priorities and how you can bring them to life. The easiest way to go through life is to be led, to let someone else tackle the hard issues and figure things out. The real challenge of democracy is keeping it fresh and playing your part every single day in keeping it healthy. The democracy created by our founding fathers was born in a world that was profoundly different than one you're about to enter. It is your responsibility to ask how democracy can and should be realized today in a world tied together by globalization, the internet, and the threat of terrorism. There is nothing simple about this task, but we believe that Chapman University has prepared you for it. We have taught you to read widely, to question what you see on television, to challenge people and ideas. You have many tools to help you do this. You can go on the internet and read newspapers from around the world to search out differing points of views. Many of you have traveled or will travel abroad to see for yourself how other societies live and how other cultures perceive America. The task before you, the task of citizenship, is never ending although you have certainly inherited a world that may not be to your liking, you are responsible for the world in which you live. Democracy can only work when ordinary citizens are willing to do extraordinary things, and you are those ordinary citizens, and from you, as graduates of Chapman University, we expect extraordinary things. The world is in your hands. I wish you good luck and Godspeed.